What's good with the fight fans, man? It's Kijana back with my main card predictions for the Corey Sanhagen and TJ Dillashaw fight. Gonna be a banger, straight banger, dude. I'm fucking looking forward to this one. Um, yeah, so let's talk, let's talk about these. Uh, Mickey Gall versus Jordan Williams, interesting matchup. Jordan Williams is pretty fucking tough. Like I said in the other video, he's from my hometown. I really want to pick him, but at the same time, I feel like Mickey Gall's probably going to beat him. I feel like if Mickey Gall can get him get him to the ground, um, he could possibly submit Jordan Williams. But at the same time, I feel like Jordan Williams might have a better gas tank than Mickey Gall. We've seen that he gassed out really bad versus fucking Diego Sanchez. And you shouldn't be losing to Diego Sanchez that young, at this young in your career. And Diego was on the way out of his career, and we've all seen what's happened with Diego um, <laughs> recently. But, uh, man, Diego looked phenomenal in that fight. I guess Mickey Gall had an excuse, said he had a staph infection or some shit like that. I don't know what it was. There's no excuses, dude. You fucking lost. You got TKO'd. It is what it is. Take the L. I'm tired of these fucking fighters making excuses of why they're losing. Oh, I have an injury. Oh, I have this. It doesn't matter, dude. Everybody has an injury going into whatever sport you're in. You're most likely going to be injured by the time you get to what you're going to do. So if you're if, if you got a Super Bowl, if you get to the Super Bowl, I guarantee you're going to be pretty banged up. If you get to the finals in the NBA, I guarantee you're going to be pretty banged up. I mean, stop. Stop with the fucking excuses, dude. It's ridiculous. Uh, unless you have a fucking punctured lung or something crazy where you have to pull out of a fight. Just pull out of the fight, dude. Don't don't fucking have an excuse to why you lost. That shit's fucking whack, dude. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with any of that shit. I know it's hard to be a fighter, and I don't want to knock any of these guys. I'm not in the ring. I'm just talking about who I think is gonna win and how I'm, how I'm gonna make some money off who's gonna win. But at the same time, I'm tired of all these fucking fighters making excuses. With Conor McGregor making an excuse, all these other people making an excuse, dude. It's getting fucking ridiculous. Um, yeah, but anyways, I'm going off topic. Mike Perry beat his ass in the last fight, um, but he didn't finish him. Mickey Gall is pretty fucking durable. He's pretty tough. Uh, he beat Salim Tahari. I don't even know who the fuck that is in his last fight um, before Mike Perry. And then he lost to Diego Sanchez. He's just been exchanging wins, loss, win, loss, win, loss. He lost to Randy Brown by UD. He went the distance with him, so that's not too bad. Um, he beat Sage Northcutt by Rene Choke, but he also got rocked in that fight. You got to remember that. Um... Yeah, man. He beat Phil Brooks. Oh, my gosh. Phil Brooks. Dude, do you guys know who Phil Brooks is? That's CM Punk. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, yeah, Mickey Gall just doesn't have an impressive record at all. Six and three. It's just he has five submission wins. That's the one thing I'm banking off of. But I just feel like he has a cardio issue. Jordan Williams is probably going to have the better cardio, even though he did gas, off, gas out a, a little bit against uh, Nasser Dean in his last fight, but he has a 9-4 record. He has more fight experience. He has one submission win and seven KO wins. So, I mean, this guy's heavy-handed, um, and he went the distance with, with Imavov, which isn't that impressive. Um, it took a, took him a while to get to the UFC. So, I mean, props to the dude. Like I said, he's from my hometown. Um, but I got to pick I gotta pick Mickey Gall on this one. I think he gets him to the ground. I think he submits him. Um, and yeah, I just hope that he his fucking this is a tossums fight, dude. I don't I'm probably not gonna put it in a parlay. I'm probably not gonna pick it at all. But for the video's sake, I'm gonna pick Mickey Gall to win. Um Jordan Williams, I I could definitely see him clipping Mickey Gall with something though and, and, and KOing him. Um it could go either way, that's for sure. Next fight, Macy Barber versus Miranda Maverick. Eight and two record, Macy Barber versus Miranda Maverick, nine and two. Macy has not been the same at all since the loss. Um, since she had that knee injury, um, she's definitely not the future anymore, unfortunately. Um, I was rooting her on. I, w I actually like watching her fight because she came out aggressive and she came out pretty much just almost over overly confident in every fight, thinking that she was going to KO every single person within the first round. And it didn't it didn't work out that way when she fought Roxanne Modafferi. Modafferi is a very awkward fighter to fight. I'm not going to say she's a great fighter, but she's awkward. And those awkward fighters tend to, they tend to beat really good fighters for some reason. I don't know what the fuck that is. I think it's just their style and just the luck of the draw, I guess. Um, but she did beat Hannah Cyphers by TKO. That's kind of impressive, kind of not, because Hannah Cyphers is durable. But at the same time, Hannah Cyphers is just not a great athlete. 
Um, she's super strong. She's got farmer strength. She beat J.J. Aldridge. That was pretty impressive. J.J. Aldridge, is, is, she's a decent fighter. Jillian Robertson is probably the most impressive one. She just she KO'd her in the first round. She came out super explosive. But then, she, then these last two fights, she lost to Roxanne Montefiore, and she just didn't. She seemed hesitant versus Alexa Grasso. She didn't seem like her normal self. She didn't seem like that hungry version of her. She seemed just kind of, I don't know, like she wanted to be there, but then she didn't want to be there. Um... I, it, I don't know what it was. It could have just been nerves. She didn't want to get injured again. She was thinking about the last fight, maybe. I don't know what the fuck it was, but she didn't seem like herself. And Miranda Maverick seems like she's pretty decent. She's got five submission wins, one KO win. She's got really good double leg and um, single leg takedowns. Um, she beat Pearl Gonzalez. That's all right. Uh, Liana Jajul by TKO. That's all right. Uh, I think that was by a doctor. Yeah, doctor stoppage. And then she beat Jillian Robertson by UD. This is another fight where it could go either fucking way. And I keep saying that with all these fights because th this card is so close. It's too close for comfort, especially for a lot of these bets. Um, I'm going to probably have really small parlays on this on this card. It's not going to be like the last card where I did the whole 10 fights. Um, maybe I'll do one. But for the most part, I think that it's going to be four or five people, four or five person parlays. Um and I'm going to rock with Miranda Maverick. She's ranked 13. Macy Barber's ranked 14. I think Miranda's going to try to take her down. She's going to try to wear on her. And Macy Barber's not going to have an answer for it. Um, if Macy Barber is her old self in this fight, she has a chance of TKO and Miranda Maverick probably in the first round. But I feel like Barber might have a cardio issue as well. She's kind of a sprinter. She just wants to get in there, get it done, and get the fuck out of there. Uh, Miranda Maverick, I feel like she has all the tools to beat Macy Barber and Macy Barber kind of has all the, all the tools to beat Miranda Maverick and that's why it's such a close matchup. This is actually a really good matchup that they that they put together, but I'm going to rock with Miranda Maverick on that one. Next fight, Darren Elkins, The Damage versus Derek Minner. Derek Minner, we all know what he's trying to do. He's trying to fucking submit you. He's a submission specialist. He has a shitload of submission wins. I don't even remember how many. I'm going to look right now. 26 and 11 record versus a 25 and 9 record. Very, very close in records. Um, 22 submission wins. That is fucking insane. One KO win, eight submission losses. So it's do or die for this guy. He wants to get in there and submit you. And if he can't submit you, then you might be able to submit him. He beat Charles Rosa, which is... I mean, I don't know. It's not really that impressive, but I thought it was at first. I picked Charles Rosa to beat this guy, and Derek Minner was a huge underdog in, um, during this fight. I thought for sure Charles Rosa was going to be able to do something uh, versus him. That was probably my worst pick of the night. It was one of my locks, and it ruined all my parlays and all my DraftKings lineups. Um, and Derek Minner was a huge 6,900, 7,000 underdog on that one. Uh, so whoever picked him, that, that props, dude, because that was a good pick. He lost to Grant Dawson by Rene Kachok, but Grant Dawson's probably, he seemed like he was way bigger than him. Derek Minner could get this done. Darren Elkins is old. We know he has heart. We know he can take damage, which is why he has the damage tatted on his fucking chest. The weirdest tattoo ever to have on you. Um, I, don't, I don't know why you'd want to be known for taking damage, but... Yeah, he is. He's known for taking damage. Five submission wins, eight KO wins. I feel like a lot of his wins are based on pure just heart and some of it based on pure luck. Uh, just the luck of the draw, man. He was on a four-fight losing streak until he beat Luis Eduardo Garagori by rear naked choke in the third round. Um, man, I don't even know. I don't know what to say about Darren Elkins. I just feel like he's taking I feel like he's taking too much punishment in his fights. I feel like I feel like Darren Elkins looks like he's like 58 years old already and he's not even close to that. He's still so he's 37. He's getting up there, but he looks old as fuck, dude. He's got so much scar tissue. He cuts in every single fight. It's hard for me to pick him. I usually don't pick him. I know he's gritty. I know he went on a fucking uh, six-fight win streak, which was pretty impressive. He beat Dennis Bermudez by split decision. Mirosad Bektik, he was getting his ass beat the whole fight and came back. He tends to do that. He tends to get his ass beat the whole time, and then he just has more heart, more grit, more cardio than his opponents, and he comes back and just beats him. Beat Michael Johnson by rear naked choke. Uh, go to Freda Castro. Chad Skelly was a pretty impressive one. I mean... Jeremy Stevens fucking beat him by UD. I mean, for him to go to distance with Jeremy Stevens is pretty impressive, considering how powerful Stevens is. But Darren Elkins is kind of an awkward fighter. Darren, Derek Minner is probably going to get a submission victory in this one. If not, I think he probably wins by a UD. Um, it's it's more probably going to be a grappling matchup, I think. I'm picking Derek Minner in this one. Um, I just feel like Darren Elkins is... I feel like Darren Elkins should retire. 
Um, yeah, but props to the dude. That's cool that he's he's still fighting and he's still trying to do it. Um, next fight, Kyler Phillips versus Hyun Paiva. The ranked 14 versus ranked 12. Kyler Phillips is coming to take people's fucking spots in this in this shit. Like I said in the last video, this fool is like Eddie Corvo on Tekken. And if you've never played Tekken, then I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Um, you should probably go get the game and play it. Because Eddie Corvo was one of my favorite characters to play during the, during the Tekken era. Um, Tekken fell off. No one really plays it anymore. It's still fun to, to hop on the sticks every now and then. Um, and, and whoop somebody's ass in that shit. But Tekken was... The, the, um, Eddie Corvo was the fucking guy, dude. Kyler Phillips reminds me so much of him. He has that, he has that fucking breakdancing, like... Um, I, that breakdancing style when he fights. And it's so fluid... I don't know. It's really, it's really fun to watch, dude. Um, he's got, he's just loose, very loose, light on his feet. Um, Paiva's powerful. He's gritty. He's, uh, he's got a twenty and three record. He's had a lot of fights. Kyler Phillips is nine and one record. Um, Paiva thirteen decision wins, four KO wins, and three submission wins. He has one KO loss, one sub loss, and one decision loss. Interesting. On a two fight winning streak, he beat Mark De La Rosa by KO in the second round. That's not very impressive. He got cut by Rogier Bontorin in the first round, and it was uh, a TKO. Kai Karafrans beat him by split decision. I mean, he beat Zagas Zumagulov by UD. He hasn't had that many impressive performances to me. Paiva's tough, though. But I just think that Kyler Phillips, I mean, they don't call him the Matrix for no reason. He's going to fucking walk all over this guy. He's going to walk all over him. That's plain and simple. If you don't put your money on Kyler Phillips, then you're fucking stupid. Um, and I might be eating my own words later on. But I doubt it. I doubt it. I fucking doubt that shit. This fool's on a four-fight win streak. Um, he's 3-0 in the UFC. He beat Gabriel Silva. He beat Cameron um, Else. And he beat Song Yudong or Yudong Song, however the fuck you want to say it. Um, I guess those aren't really that impressive performances. But the way he's doing it, I mean, I know these are both, both two of them are UDs and one of them is TKL Elbow. But it's, it's just his fluid style, dude. And he's, he's actually really good on the ground as well. He's got good takedowns. He's very well-rounded, and he just keeps improving in every single one of his fights. I'm rocking with Kyler Phillips, dude. He's one of my locks. He's one of my locks of the fucking, of the night. So, like I said, if you don't pick him, then you don't want to make no money. Pure, that's pure and simple. If you don't pick him, you don't want to make no money. Um, next fight, Aspen Ladd, ranked number three, versus Macy Shiosson, ranked number nine. I don't know why Aspen Ladd is such a high rank. I don't get how she's ranked three already. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Let me look and see who she's fought because I don't even. I can't remember the last time she fought. Nine and one record. Oh, I think she got KO'd in her last fight. No, she beat Yana Kunizakai. That's who it was. She TKO'd her in the third round. She is. She she looked really good in that fight. She got fucked up versus Jermaine Durandamay, and I picked her versus. Uh, I, no, I picked Jermaine Durandamay in that fight. I felt like her, Jermaine was just. She had too much kickboxing experience, and she just. She moved better. Um, good footwork. Aspen Ladd's a little flat-footed. She's kind of stuck in the mud at times. Macy Shiaosone is 7-1. and one. So they're, they have around the same amount of fights. Like I said, she beat uh, she beat uh, Sajara Eubanks twice. She, should, she probably should have lost the second time, but it is what it is. Uh, she beat Tanya Evinger. Macy Shiasone gassed out in one of her fights, so now I'm always worried about her cardio. She has two KO wins, two sub wins, and one decision loss to Lena Landsberg. She beat Shauna Young by UD. She beat Marion Renew by UD. Those are not impressive at all. She beat Sarah Morris by TKO, and that's because Sarah Morris is not a striker, and she kept trying to get her to the ground and couldn't get her to the ground, so we all know that was going to happen. She beat Gina Mazzani by TKO. She beat Piani Kianzad by Rene Kachog. I think Piani Kianzad and it was probably the most impressive one. Uh, Mary Renault was old. She's on her way out. She didn't look great in her last fight this weekend. Um, yeah, I would only say Panny Kianzad was the only significant name in this in that whole thing. All the other ones are kind of like, I don't really know. But I'm rocking with Macy Shiasson on this one. What is the reach? I want to know what the reach is. And she's a plus 150. I think Aspen Ladd's going to have better cardio, though. Six-inch reach advantage. Holy shit. I'm rocking with Macy Shiasson. Aspen Ladd hits hard, though, and she could take a punch. She doesn't have the best head movement, though. <clears throat> I think... How is this the co-main? 
That's what I'm trying to figure out. How the fuck is this fight the co-main? It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, yeah, dude, they need to do better with their with how they fucking map these fights out. And, like, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I think Aspen Lad's probably going to lose this one. I got to rock with Macy Shasson. Plus 150. Okay, we're getting to the main fucking event. Corey Sanhagen ranked number two. The Sandman versus TJ Dillashaw. TJ Killashaw. I miss TJ Dillashaw, man. Um, I wasn't a fan at first, but I started becoming more of a fan when Cody Garbron and all that other, all those other, the other dudes were fucking Uriah, Uriah Faber and all these other dudes were fucking talking shit about TJ Dillashaw about how he left the gym and all this bullshit, dude. Of course he left the gym, dude. He wanted to expand. He wanted to learn other fucking things. I don't get what's wrong with leaving someone's gym and trying to learn other fucking types of martial arts other skill sets training with other people expanding your horizon it doesn't make any sense you think he's gonna just stay with your guys' team forever he didn't he didn't he probably didn't want to quit he probably wanted to still train there but then they got all butt hurt because he wants to train with train with other people it just doesn't make any sense maybe there's more story behind it that i don't know but the story that i know from the media it just doesn't make any sense cody was too fucking butt hurt they were all too butt hurt about him leaving the gym um yeah he got the belt while he was at that gym but at the same time let the dude expand dude let he let him get better let him fucking train with other people like you guys are trying to just keep him stuck in the mud at that fucking one team like th you have to expand if you want to get better dude you're not gonna exp you're not gonna get better training with the same people every sa all the time you gotta you gotta train with other people you gotta train with different types of people um and i i think that was great for tj dillashaw to do that i don't agree with what he did with the epo he lost his last fight by TKO to Henry Cejudo in the first round, which he just got clipped. Henry Cejudo looked very beefy in that fight, though. Uh, very stocky. He was on a five or four-fight win streak before that. He beat uh, Cody Garbrandt. Cody Garbrandt. And he beat... Uh, he could beat him twice, actually. <laughs> I remember I remember both of them. I just didn't know they were back-to-back. -back. He beat John Lineker. Uh, John Lineker was just fucking... I don't know, dude. He has a brick head. Uh, and he is very heavy-handed. Uh, he beat a Hapai Alessandro, lost to Dominic Cruz by split decision. I mean, this guy's fought everybody in the division. TJ Dillashaw's literally fought everybody. Um, I can't, I don't, he, the only person I don't, don't think he fought was um, Demetrius Johnson. And I think Demetrius Johnson would have beat him. A lot of people probably don't agree with that one, but I think he would have beat him. I think Demetrius was one of the best people to fight in that division ever, if not the best. I don't even feel like Henry Cejudo beat um, Demi uh, Demetrius in the second fight. Um, I do feel like Corey Sanhagen can get it done. I feel like he's got all the tools to get it done. I'm just interested to see what his takedown defense look is going to look like, if he's even going to have good takedown defense, if he has good ground game. I don't know if Corey Sanhagen has good ground game. And the, the main reason I'm worried about this fight and picking him is how fast he got submitted by Aljamain Sterling. It was just insane. Um, he beat Marlon Marais by that spinning heel kick. A uh, spinning wheel kick, and he beat Frankie Edgar with the flying knee, which just, it froze time. That shit froze time, dude. Like, when I watched it, I was like, holy shit. Like, time froze for a second, because the way that <laughs> the way that he knocked him out was so vicious. Frankie Edgar was in the air for, like, at least two or three seconds while he was falling, while he was already knocked out. It was an insane fucking KO. Um, this fool beat John Lineker by split decision. He beat Rafael Sanz. He beat almost pretty much all the same people. Mario Batista was a good win um, by armbar. So, I mean, he does have, Corey Sanhagen has three submission wins, six KO wins. Um, and like I said, one sub loss, and he lost to Jamal Emers by UD. That was way back in 2017. If he fought Jamal Emers today, he would beat him. Um, yeah, I think I really want to pick Corey Sanhagen. And I'm going to pick Corey Sanhagen. But I, I do think TJ Dillashaw is a good underdog pick, dude. You just don't know what to expect from him for this fight coming back because he's been gone for a while. He has a three-inch uh, reach disadvantage. He's going to try to take it down. He's going to try to wear on Corey Sanhagen on, uh, from the bottom. And I think he definitely could do it. Um, yeah, man. It's going to be a crazy, crazy fight card. Um, but make sure you guys drop your fucking comments. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys subscribe. Um, and let me know who your top three main card predictions are. I want to know. 
And I want to know everybody's input on this Corey Sanhagen versus TJ Dillashaw fight because it's a very interesting matchup. And I think people are counting TJ Dillashaw out instantly um, and just saying, oh, he only was the championship because he was on steroids or EPO or whatever the fuck it was. He only did this because of that. No, you still have to have actual talent. You can take all the steroids that, the, that you want in the world, but if you don't actually put in the work and you don't actually have talent, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, so you still have to have talent to be able to do what he was doing. Um, and people are just kind of writing him off and just saying like, and I'm not even a huge TJ Dillashaw fan. I like certain aspects of him, but I mean, I'm not a huge fan of him. Um, I'm more of a fan of Corey Sandigan, but I'm just telling the truth. Like, it doesn't matter if you take that shit. Like, it does to a certain extent, but it doesn't to a certain extent. Because if you take it, yeah, I mean, maybe that's why he recovered faster versus the Cody fight when he got dropped. And if there was another 20 seconds, he would have he would have lost that fight for sure. Or maybe not. I don't know. But I, st I just I just feel like people are just thinking like, oh, the steroids are all the EPO fucking won them all these fights. No, man, he actually have to you actually have to have talent to win a fight still. It doesn't matter. You can still get KO'd like anybody else on steroids. Um, it just anything can happen. So I, I, that, that's just a stu stupid fucking excuse by a bunch of these these people that are commenting on that. Um, yeah, so make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment. Um, hopefully you guys liked the video. Enjoy the fights.